हेलो फ्रेंड्स प्लीज गेट रेडी फॉर अ डिक्टेशन ऑफ ट्रांसक्रिप्शन नंबर 278 फ्रॉम सर कैलाश चंद्र मैगजीन फाइव सेकेंड्स स्टार्ट आई वुड लाइक टू एड दैट द ऑनरेबल मेंबर्स इंप्रेशन दैट वट एवर हैज बीन पुट इन टू दीज कंपनीज फ्रॉम द कंसोलिडेटेड फंड इज डन विदाउट एन अप्रोप्रिएशन इज नॉट करेक्ट नो मनी कैन बी पेड आउट ऑफ द कंसोलिडेटेड फंड विदाउट some appropriation of some kind or the other therefore sir the real issue is not so much of paying monies out of the consolidated fund or the form of organization but the powers of the comptroller and auditor general and the authority of the executive as well as parliament over these organizations especially in regard to financial matters that is to say financial control in regard to the opposition of the comptroller auditor general when we bring forward that particular legislation which we have in mind or when we insert that chapter undoubtedly we shall make a provision there which will ensure that the comptroller and auditor general is enabled to exercise the functions which the constitution intended that he should exercise in the case of organizations which are owned entirely by government of course there is no question it will always be provided that the comptroller and auditor general shed audit the doubts will arise in respect of companies or corporations may be in which government have only a share now some limit would have to be indicated above which the whole concern would be regarded as sufficiently a state concern to attract the exercise of the functions of the comptroller and auditor general and at that appropriate time i have no doubt that the house will be invited to give its thought to these matters and we might remove any doubts that might be lingering in the mind of the comptroller and auditor general or in the mind of the public accounts committee next i come to the control of parliament the honorable member quoted something from the uk as far as i can decipher the public accounts committee is never eliminated i do not know whether i misunderstood him anyway i make the statement that all reports and accounts issued by the corporations are presented to parliament and consequently are subject to scrutiny by the public accounts committee it is the comptroller and auditor general who does not always figure in these matters but there is a move to appoint an officer equal in status to the comptroller and auditor general parliament comes in when monies are appropriated parliament comes in when the public accounts committee reports on how these appropriations have been used and when the public accounts committee considers this there is no document that can be withheld from the public accounts committee i think much has been made of the answer given by my honorable colleague in regard to the furnishing of lists of contracts it may be that certainly as the prime minister pointed out if parliament does insist that all the contracts must be placed before the house they have a right to demand but as a matter of practical prudence it may be that these things are not necessary in other words public officers who exercise certain functions carry their heads so to speak on a platter and ready to be knocked off if it is shown and proved afterwards to the satisfaction of parliament that they have not properly carried out their duties therefore i do not see how there has been any detraction from the authority of the parliament exercised through the public accounts committee by the mere creation of corporations with the knowledge and consent of parliament let us now confine this issue to the very clear and oversimplified case of a corporation created by an act of legislature therefore parliament itself would be invited to exercise a certain measure of self denial or at least to agree to a measure of self denial by the executive in its financial control and if that is the situation if experience proves that the thing is not working properly then it may be that we may have to revise the whole basis of what we call our mixed economy it may be that we find that our bureaucracy is not capable of handling some of the matters which have been entrusted to them the honorable member referred to a food secretary having been appointed as managing director or something of the shipyard and the secretary general being appointed as the chairman of the shipping corporation 
he probably does not recall that that particular person had been for 14 years in the commerce and industry ministry now so far as these negotiations are concerned the honorable member is under a very wrong impression i myself can vouch to this that i have been concerned at almost every important stage with the negotiations from the financial point of view in regard to the oil refineries or with negotiations going on regarding steel today so far as steel is concerned there is an ad hoc committee which includes the prime minister the production minister and myself stop